This video is sponsored by U2s, and guys, <laughs> this is a big one. U2s has made all sorts of great limited edition collectibles for things ranging from Breaking Whoa. Bad to Markiplier. However, recently they've been releasing some awesome FNAF products, and today I have the honor of helping U2s launch their very first collection of Fazbear Fanverse figures. This is a huge deal for FNAF as a whole, since up until this point, Fazbear Fanverse merch hasn't really been a thing, but the ball is finally starting to roll, and it's kicking off with these three figures. We have a dapper looking Pop Goes the Weasel figure from Pop Goes Evergreen, a fantastic looking Candy the Cat figure from Five Nights at Candy's, and finally, a spooky looking figure of Ignited Freddy from The Joy of Creation. As part of this sponsorship with U2s, they sent over the Ignited Freddy figure to me to show off to you all. And man, does this guy look fantastic in person. It is genuinely surreal to have a piece of merch from a FNAF fan game in my hands in real life. I will 100% be buying the other two figures, which launch today alongside Ignited Freddy. Head on over to YouTube's.com or use the link in the description to check out the first wave of the Fazbear Fanverse collection today. Remember, these are limited edition items, so once they're gone, they're gone forever. Go support the Fazbear Fanverse and pick up these figures. If these do well, I would kill to get a monster rat, U2s. Thank you to U2s for sponsoring this video. But seriously, go buy these, they are fantastic. In honor of today's video being sponsored by the newly released FNAF Fanverse U2s figures and the new Fanverse plushies dropping today as well, I thought it would be fitting to talk about something relating to the fanverse. The problem with that though is that I kind of already used up my best fanverse video idea like two months ago, so <laughs> whoops. I don't have anything to say about Pop Goes, a Joy of Creation video will happen eventually, and FNAF Plus isn't even out yet, so I can't really make a video about that. Or can I? Well, technically I could talk about the teasers and trailers or whatever, but snore me 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 me, that's old news and boring at this point. So, I thought, instead of talking about FNAF Plus itself, why not talk about the game that came before FNAF Plus? The game that was taken down by Scott Cawthon himself and eventually led to the creation of FNAF Plus. I'm talking about FNAF 2 Open Source. This fan-made remake was created by Fiznom as a way to test his skills with Game Maker Studio, as well as to prove that it was the superior engine to create FNAF fan games in, compared to Click Team Studio, which had pretty much become the standard thanks to the official Scott Cawthon FNAF fan games being made in that engine. However, not long after that game was released, it was swiftly taken down by Scott Cawthon himself. So what's the deal here? Well, let's get into it. We'll talk about the game itself, how it compares to the actual FNAF 2, why it was taken down, and how that led to Fiznom working on an official remake of FNAF 1. But first, oh wait, I already played the sponsorship, god damn. All right, to understand what this game is all about, we first have to talk about the state the game was released in. You see, this game isn't actually finished. A public beta was released to get feedback from the community, as well as to just see the general opinion on the game and its changes from FNAF 2. However, because of this, the open source part of the game was never actually released. Which is a bit of a shame, but also might be a blessing in disguise. Sure, it would have helped many people in the community understand how Game Maker works better, and we may have gotten some really cool fan projects out of that. But on the other hand, there is no doubt in my mind that if that source code was released, there would be waves and waves of shitty asset flips of the game with small changes uploaded every single day to Game Jolt. Double Edged Sword. But the fan game community seems to be doing fine without it, so I guess it really didn't matter in the end. Anyway, even though the game was never finished, the beta we did get features a fully complete custom night, which is pretty much all you actually need anyway. It's much better than this demo literally just being like the first two nights or something. Here you can set up your own nights 1 through 5 in a way, and play the game like that, which I think works well enough. So even though this game was never finished, it's in a complete enough state where you can fully enjoy it for what it is. Although the public beta test watermark being permanently stuck on the only version of this game is a little annoying. The game opens up with a really great looking main menu. You're able to see animatronics appear in the hallway on the side when you hover over the different options, and it adds a lot of life to the menu. Jumping into the custom night menu, man does this thing look slick as hell. You have a ton of options here to shake up the gameplay, and I can only hope the custom night settings in FNAF Plus will be even better than this. You can change the length of the night, how much battery you have, the toxicity levels, and how much your battery goes down when you use power. Included as well are a couple game mods that change the gameplay loop but I'll talk a bit about those later. I wasn't 100% sure how to tackle this game, 
Since it is a custom knight, I wouldn't have that gradual increase in difficulty and mechanics unless I set it up that way myself. So that's what I did. I figured out what AI levels the animatronics are in each knight of FNAF 2, and tried to recreate each knight in this game to form some sort of natural difficulty curve. I think it worked out pretty well. It wasn't exactly one-to-one, -one, since the AI levels in this game aren't set up the exact same way they are in FNAF 2, but I was able to create an experience that felt fun to go through, and I was able to get a really good understanding of how this game works. And after going through this entire custom game I made for myself, I am genuinely shocked that this was taken down by Scott at all. Obviously, he has the right to do so, since at the end of the day, it's his characters, but the claim that this was just a full remake of FNAF 2 for free is straight up wrong. The gameplay loop in this game is almost entirely different. It's hard to even call them the same game outside of the literal basic mechanics. No doors, using a mask, etc. The office, for starters, while being a similar layout, is pretty much completely different visually. It goes for a much darker feel compared to the actual FNAF 2 office. While I do like the FNAF 2 office, it always felt a little too bright in my opinion. Comparing the offices in FNAF 1 and FNAF 2, FNAF 2 just isn't scary at all. In fact, I don't think FNAF 2 is scary in any way really. Trust me, I love this game for what it brought to the series. The cool easter eggs, the great designs, but from a horror perspective, this game fails in so many ways. The office being too bright is one thing, but almost every jump scare looks goofy rather than scary. The animatronic selection isn't as consistently creepy as FNAF 1's, and the sound design is nowhere near as clever. Memorable, yes, but you can only play the FNAF 2 ambient sound so many times before it loses its punch. Okay, that was a bit of a tangent. Let's move back to talking about FNAF 2 OS. But trust me, we are not done talking about the actual FNAF 2. One of the biggest changes here, for me at least, is that now, instead of using the control key on the keyboard to use the flashlight, you just click the place you want to light up. This change is literally so small and simple, but god am I glad it's here. I never ever understood why you were forced to use the keyboard to play FNAF 2, when the mouse buttons are right there and work perfectly fine. The only downside to this is that in order to light up the cameras now, you have to click a specific button on the UI, which is pretty annoying. I got used to it after a bit, but I do kind of wish you could just click anywhere on the camera feed to light up the room. The camera layouts here are a bit different this time around, with some cameras being straight up gone, and some new things being added as well. There's a proper Pirate's Co for Mangle now, the prize counter has a completely different angle, and the storage room has an extremely good looking design now, that resembles the one from FNAF 1 a lot more. Overall, the visuals here are fantastic, and I really don't have that many issues with how this game looks. Everything is just that much more alive in this version, and thank god it also has widescreen. That extra screen space is always nice, and I will never get over the actual FNAF 2 being 4x3 for literally no reason. Most of the models here are ripped straight from official FNAF games like Help Wanted, and while I don't really like how they look in that game, the way they're rendered here works really well, and I don't have any issues with how they look. The mask this time around isn't a Freddy mask, but a Bonnie mask instead. Which is such an obvious change, I'm surprised Scott didn't think of that himself while making FNAF 2. Speaking of the mask, I think it's time to get into the gameplay of this thing. And oh boy, is there a lot to talk about here. Alright, as I already stated, the basics here are pretty much the exact same. You have the mask you can use to protect yourself, the main door in the middle, and the two vents on each side of the room. The three main toy animatronics work pretty much the exact same way they do in FNAF 2. However, there's a couple small changes here. For starters, Toy Chica actually has her office animation. In the original FNAF 2, only Toy Bonnie has an animation while you're in the mask. Chica just leaves without doing anything. However, this wasn't supposed to be the case. In the game files for FNAF 2 are a set of images that make up the Chica version of that Bonnie animation. For some reason, they ended up going unused. But in this remake, that mechanic is fully re-added. Toy Freddy also works a bit differently this time around. FNAF 2 was all about quick reflexes. On higher difficulties, you'll be putting on your mask every single time you drop your camera so you can protect yourself in case something is in the office. If you're even a little bit too slow on the mask, you're pretty much good as dead. FNAF 2 OS removes all the reaction time BS from the actual game and gives you ample time to deal with each threat as they come. So instead of Toy Freddy actually entering your office and giving you a fraction of a second to react, now he'll just chill in the front doorway, similar to how the vent animatronics work. When you drop the mask, then he'll enter the office, do a little jig, then leave. I think this is a really good change. 
I never understood why Toy Freddy acted the exact same way as the withered animatronics in FNAF 2, rather than the other toy animatronics. So this is a very welcome change that keeps Toy Freddy in line with the other toys. Balloon Boy pretty much works the exact same way he did in FNAF 2, except instead of straight up stealing your sweet succulent AA batteries like he does in FNAF 2, if he gets in your office, he'll quickly drain your battery power until it's empty. This game brings back the power system from FNAF 1, rather than bringing over the flashlight system from 2. The flashlight in FNAF 2 is pretty much a complete joke, and it is almost never an issue for the player. You're given way more than enough battery power, that you often just forget it's even something you can run out of until Balloon Boy takes it away. Here in FNAF 2 OS, battery power is much more strict, and you'll often finish a night with very little power left, similar to FNAF 1 which makes the overall gameplay much more stressful and encourages smart power usage, so you can survive the full night. If you do run out of power, the puppet will show up at your door and jump scare you, like Freddy in FNAF 1. That's actually the puppet's entire role in this game. The music box is completely gone, which is unironically the best change in the entire game. Time for another epic FNAF 2 rant. Okay, the biggest issue with FNAF 2 by far is the gameplay. It is unironically some of the worst in the entire series. You'd think with all these different characters in this massive location, you'd be doing a lot. But in reality, you really only have to focus on one camera, that being the prize corner. Because the music box decreases so fast in Harder Nights, it becomes a genuine waste of time to check the other cameras in the location. Nothing important ever happens on them from a gameplay standpoint, and all the action in FNAF 2 happens within the office. So pretty much the entire camera system can be thrown out the window. Just replace it with a black screen with a decreasing meter that you can increase, and it's pretty much the exact same experience. Because of the reaction-based nature of the gameplay in FNAF 2, the entire gameplay loop boils down to winding the music box, putting the camera down, and immediately putting the mask on, checking the vents, flashing out Foxy, rinse and repeat for the entire game. It gets stale. Fast. There's no skill or strategy involved, it's really just how good you are at doing a series of fast motions over and over and over and over again. So, if this is such a big issue in FNAF 2, how does OS fix this while still making the gameplay fun and interesting? Enter Mangle. In FNAF 2, they move around the location and make their way to the vent while making a loud static sound. I like how they work in that game, but they really just boil down to an easier to deal with Bonnie and Chica. In OS, their entire mechanic is completely changed. Remember when I mentioned that Mangle has a full-on Pirate Cove now? That ties directly into their mechanic. Mangle now resides in Pirate's Cove, and they hate being flashed at. So the best way to keep them at bay is to shine your flashlight at them on the camera from time to time. This pretty much replaces the music box, but it's nowhere near as aggressive or demanding. It feels like a very natural inclusion, and the entire game doesn't turn into a flash mangle simulator. If they do escape the cove, however, they'll bust into your office with this incredibly cool animation, then jump scare you shortly after. When you die in this game, a small pop-up will appear on the game over screen that tells you how the animatronic works and what to do next time. Such a simple addition, yet it allows the player to try a new run with more information than they started with. Small things like that really add a lot, and help make the game feel more fair to a new player. Anyway, with Mangle out of the way, we're done talking about the toy animatronics. Right now, you're probably wondering what makes this loop so much different compared to the actual FNAF 2. From what I've said so far, it must just seem like you could keep your camera on Mangle the entire game and just use the office for everything else. Well, that's where you're wrong. The withered animatronics add a lot to the game that really puts the final touches on everything and ties the gameplay loop together in a clean bow. In FNAF 2, Withered Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica would make their way from the back room all the way to your office. Once they got in the office, you had a fraction of a second to throw on the mask to make them go away. That entire mechanic is now gone. These three characters now share a new mechanic that once again puts the camera flashlight to good use. They will make their way around the building, trying to reach the vents or the doorway. The mask won't do anything to them this time around. Instead, if you see them on the camera, you have to shine a light on them to repel them back from reaching your office. I absolutely love this mechanic. Not only does it force you to use every single camera to check where they are at all times, but it single-handedly saves the game from being a Pirate Cove simulator. Now you have to juggle all the camera mechanics at once while also paying attention to the office. Wow, what a crazy concept, am I right? Using the cameras in a FNAF game. I know, crazy, right? This mechanic adds just the right amount of extra challenge and depth to the game to push it over the edge for me, and it's very easily better than the actual FNAF 2 gameplay loop. Withered Foxy works pretty much the exact same way he did in FNAF 2. However, 
This time there's different phases for him in the doorway, so you can tell how close he is to the office a lot easier. Finally, we have Golden Freddy, who uh, he works the exact same way as FNAF 2. Yeah. Whoa, uh, yeah, from the future here, editing this video at 4 a.m. <laughs> okay, I was wrong about Golden Freddy. He has a completely different mechanic, kind of. So he can appear in the door and in your office like in FNAF 2, but he can also appear in the vents as well. And unlike FNAF 2, when he jump scares you, you don't die. Instead, it automatically applies the toxic effect, which I'll talk about later in this video. The way to get rid of him is to ignore him. So he'll be in your hallway or the vents, and if he's there, just don't flash. Just wait until he leaves. So that can be a little bit of a problem if you got Foxy there or, you know, you can't check those vents. So it's, it adds a little bit more to that gameplay loop. Anyway, I got that wrong, just wanted to add that in there. It's so late. Anyway, I hope you like this video. It's super epic, yeah. And that's pretty much the game. There's a couple other things such as the game mods that alter the gameplay, which are pretty cool. There's one mod that makes it so time doesn't move on its own and you have to move it forward by holding a button at the prize counter. And there's another mod that makes the toxicity effect permanent when you get it. Speaking of, I should probably explain that real quick. There was a scrapped mechanic in FNAF 2 called the Toxic Meter. What it would have done is made it so you can't have your mask on for the entire night. Obviously it was scrapped, because animatronics like Foxy and the Puppet do that in a much more natural way. But the idea was used again here in FNAF 2 OS. Essentially, while you have the mask up, an effect will very slowly start to form on the screen. If you have the mask on for too long, the toxicity meter will become too much, and the mask will be unusable until the effect goes away. It never really affected my gameplay, since on the normal setting, it is very slow. But you can change how fast it comes in the settings, which can be used for some pretty cool challenge runs. With that out of the way, we really only have one more thing to talk about. Why the hell did Scott take this game down? As we've already been over, the mechanics in this game are almost completely different to FNAF 2's, and even the stuff that is shared between the two games feels much different thanks to the differences in the gameplay loops here. Here is my guess as to why this game was taken down. I don't think Scott plays many fan games, which I don't blame him for, but I just wanted to put that out there. What probably happened is he saw the game getting a lot of attention when the public beta dropped and assumed the game was literally just a full remake of the second game with almost no changes. Worried that it may hurt sales in some way, which I highly doubt that would have happened, but whatever, he decided to get Game Jolt to take the game down. This is why any new fan remake projects say you need the original game in your Steam library to play them. It's to get around potentially being taken down like this game was. Shortly after this happened, Fiznom, the creator of the remake, decided to email Scott himself about the game being taken down. This somehow led to a conversation where Fiznom told Scott what he thinks is wrong with every FNAF game from a gameplay standpoint. Around this time, Scott was working on creating and announcing the Fazbear Fandiverse Initiative. And since he saw that Fiznom was clearly talented and had an understanding of how to make a good FNAF game, he offered Fiznom the opportunity to pitch him a remake of the first FNAF game. That remake is a little game called FNAF Plus that you've probably heard of before. And the rest is really history. FNAF Plus is looking fantastic, and even though FNAF 2 OS was killed in the process, at the end of the day, something positive came from this whole ordeal. FNAF Plus is even using Game Maker as its engine as well, so that practice with FNAF 2 OS really paid off in the end. I am very excited to see what FNAF Plus has in store, and if it's truly Fiznom's final FNAF game, then damn, this is one hell of a way to go out. We'll just have to wait and see. In the meantime, if you want to play FNAF 2 OS yourself, there are tons of re-uploads online you can find for the public beta. I won't link any here, but if you use your basic level Google search skills, I'm sure you'll be able to find something. Anyway, that's pretty much all from me today. I've been Oh Yeah, and I'll see you all next time.